Sweden has among the toughest gun laws in the world. Even in Nazi Germany, that's popularly conceived as having had very prohibitive gun laws, had much less restrictive laws than Sweden does. The law that regulates ownership of guns and certain other weapons in the country is called the Weapons Law, Vapenlagen in Swedish. The first chapter deals with what counts as a firearm under these laws. Paragraph 2 has a very inclusive definition, even including harpoon launchers. Perhaps indicative at how modern these laws are is the fact that they apply to crossbows as well, even though this type of weapon isn't considered a firearm. Salute cannons aren't regulated under the law, however, and neither are most firearms manufactured before 1890, Wild West reenactors rejoice. Chapter 2 deals with permits for weapons. Paragraph 4 reads, An individual may be given a permit to own a firearm only if the individual needs the weapon for an acceptable purpose. While it's fairly easy to get a permit for a hunting rifle if you got the license, or a pistol not suitable for self-defense if you're in a pistol club, it's almost impossible to get a permit even for a revolver. Paragraph 6 reads, A permit to own fully automatic weapons or handguns may be given only if there are exceptional reasons. Though the exact number is hard to come by, it's rumored that the total number of civilians in Sweden having permits for revolvers is far less than 100. Chapter 9 deals with punishment for illegal possession of firearms. Paragraph 1 stipulates that illegal possession is punishable with up to a year in prison, or if it's a major offense, a minimum of 6 months and maximum of 4 years in prison. The term major weapons crime might lead you to think that it's a case of automatic weapons or similar, yet in a number of cases it's been nothing more than the possession of a single pistol. An 18-year-old with two pistols, major weapons crime. A loaded hunting rifle, a man and a woman both charged with major weapons crime. A single pistol thrown out of a car being pursued by the police, all six people in the car are charged with major weapons crime. A man carrying a titanic pistol for self-defense, major weapons crime. The prosecutor described the weapon as lethal. The court sentenced the man to six months. Possession of a magnum revolver. Sentenced to eight months in prison for major weapons crime. No reduction of his sentence was given for his story about how he found the weapon in a flower bed near a McDonald's restaurant and picked it up without being able to judge whether it was a toy or a real weapon. A 59-year-old man found in possession of a revolver and sentenced to six months. To quote the court, that the weapon was lethal is supported by that during the trial shooting at the police station, it has been shown to work flawlessly. Even simple self-defense tools such as pepper sprays can get you imprisoned in Sweden. The country today has one of the highest rape rates in the world, yet it's still almost impossible to get a license for these sprays. In practice, only the police and security guards have access to them. Even if you're a young woman, you will still be sent to prison if the police finds you carrying these. A 32-year-old woman was sentenced to prison for possession of a pepper spray, among other things. A 23-year-old woman is arrested for possession of a pepper spray, among other things. Even the most respectable of people find it hard to convince the police and the courts to grant them gun permits. In 2001, a shepherd who for 30 years on a routine basis had walked his sheep through forest applied for a permit for a magnum revolver, arguing that he needed it to protect himself against bears, who on numerous occasions had attacked him. Oh my god, I'm gonna be killed by a bear! Since earlier he had had a permit for a couple of hunting rifles, but felt they didn't grant him enough protection from the bears, since when they were in close quarters, the rifles were useless. <laughs> the police authority disagreed, however, and rejected his application on the 8th of June 2001. The man appealed to the first court, which rejected it as well on the 24th of October, citing that no exceptional reasons existed that would allow him a permit for a handgun. 
They also suggested that a hunting rifle was in fact the proper weapon for self-defense against animals and argued that he might just be lazy and didn't want to carry around a heavy rifle. He appealed again and had better luck in the next court on the 11th of December 2002 with the court citing his great need for the weapon and good standing in society, they granted him a permit. This time the police authority appealed the verdict and on the 31st of March 2004 in the highest court the verdict was reversed again. After almost three years of litigation it was finally decided that the man had no right to carry a revolver. In October of 2008, the police made two raids at biathlon clubs because they suspected that the rifles there weren't being managed properly. On the 13th of October, the police hits Eskobore Biathlon in Torsby, seizing 15 rifles, suspecting improper management. A month later, the police notifies the biathlon club that they no longer have the right to keep weapons, making it impossible for the members to practice the sport. A week later, on the 22nd of October, the police hits the high school Stjärneskolan in Torsby with a raid as well, without any notification in advance, seizing 31 rifles and notifying many of the students whose weapons were taken that they were suspected of weapons crimes. The police later clarifies that the management of the weapons wasn't up to date with current legislation, with the facilities being designed in the 70s. The police chief in charge of the operation said that the lack of criminal intent didn't matter. Negligence was enough to charge these teenagers with weapon crimes.